guys, how's it going? Today I want to give you an update tour on how the hay racks are doing. We planted 22 three foot hay racks six weeks ago with 20 of the new varieties for 2024 and two of them are new for this year in 2023. And I have to say that I am really impressed with all of the growth, especially with the super bells, because many of you know, if you've been watching our videos, super bells and I traditionally don't mix, but so far these are just performing really, really well. So I just want to give you kind of a state of affairs look at these hay racks. And I did plant some of these out in the landscape as well. So for those that I do have, we'll run out there afterward and take a look. We have overcast for at least a little while, which is awesome. It was 105 degrees yesterday. Uh, today's supposed to be 99, but it is a little breezy, but it's glorious out here. So let's start with this one right here. This is the Super Bells Redstone. And it has really, there's five of them in here. They've really bulked up, filled in like, gotten really thick and they're starting to spill over the edge. I don't think any of these in the hay racks need to be deadheaded in order for them to keep blooming. And I like how you can see the old ones right here. They get kind of buried by all the new ones. So you just see all of that color. Now these are kind of like, I thought they were gonna be a little bit more bright red with the yellow margin, but they're a little bit more muted, which I like. It kind of makes it pass for red for me in my garden. I typically, I like red flowers, but I usually go for more of a pastel in my flower beds kind of vibe. So this one, I think I could actually incorporate with some more of those like yellows and oranges that I like to use. The next one here is a new one for this year. This is the Supertunia Mini Vista Midnight. And I have to say, this is my very favorite place that I have it. Last year, I noticed that this one had a very flat growth habit. I mean like pancake flat and it was, it was having a hard time mounding and I thought, oh, I don't know, like maybe if you're using it as a strict trailer out the side of a container and not like expecting it to mound up that it would work. Uh, but it is definitely mounding here. There are only three in this hay rack right here and they are looking amazing. And the one thing I really like about this one too is that it's maintaining its color. Um, you know, a lot of times, like with the Mini Vista Indigo, you get a lot of different colors on the same plant because the flowers start to fade. So you get like the, the purple and then it's kind of a lavender and then almost a white. This one pretty much maintains, you can see the more aged flowers in here. They fade just a little bit like you would expect them to, but overall you get a very unified appearance, which I really, really like. Next one. I'm impressed by this one. James Britannia, this is called Safari Dawn. There's also Safari Sky and Safari Sunset, I think. Anyway, amazing growth, both in the ground and in containers with this one. Just absolutely full of flowers. It's, I mean, these are getting full on sun if the sun is out, uh, which it has been, and they get all the, the wind. They're not protected by anything. And it's just amazing. They don't have to be sprayed for budworm like we have to with the super tunias and super bells. Um, and I really like the color. I think it has, I mean, it's a very pleasant kind of purpley pink, but the middle of the flower with that uh, kind of orangey yellow with the white ring around it, it gives it a kind of glow quality. And I, I really like that. Next one, this is a super bells vintage coral. There are five in here. I forgot to mention, I think there's five of the James Britannia. There might be seven, I'll have to refer back, but five of the Super Bells. This color is just so pretty. So, so pretty. I love the double that these flowers have. I love the color, the growth habit is awesome. I mean, these are staying so thick, not getting lanky at all. We've not trimmed these at all. I have not touched these at all, except for they do get weekly fertilizer. And then the Super Bells and Super Tunias are sprayed once a week with BT to keep the budworms out, but that's it. I've not touched them other than that. Right here, this is a Biden's called Campfire Marshmallow, and I love this plant. However, I like it in the ground better than in this hay rack. And I think I would like it in a hay rack if I had other things, you know, kind of tucked in uh, because it's more of an upright plant. So you kind of expect that, right? Like in a hay rack, you're usually wanting to do things that will trail over the sides a little bit more and kind of uh, cover the edges. But as far as performance go, goes. I'm very happy with this one. There's five in this container here. I love the dainty white daisy like flowers and the deep green leaves. That contrast is really nice. Then we've got the Super Bells improved pink. So full of color. So five of them in this hay rack and I just like the clear pink color and I like the performance. Not, not much else to say about that except for I'm just proud of these plants for hanging with me. <laughs> these Super Bells in particular. Uh, this is a new one for this year. 
Yeah, they got moisture. This one looks like it might be heading toward the dry side. This is a Super Bell's Mini Vista uh, Yellow. And these have done really well for us in containers, also in the ground. Um, you can see like this one, if I didn't have so many planters, I would probably be out here deadheading this. And there's a few of them. I'll show you a couple more that I feel like I would want to deadhead. You don't have to in order for it to keep blooming, uh, but sometimes it can give it a cleaner appearance. Now we do have these in the ground and I would never notice the spent blooms. And you probably wouldn't even like, you know, when you back up just a little bit, but the uh, flower to leaf ratio is always really good. I think it's maybe even higher in the ones we've got in the ground. But I like the uh, size of the blooms and that really pleasing kind of clear yellow color. Next one, this is a, hopefully the tag is still in here, yes, double <laughs> smitten pink. I knew it was something pink. I couldn't remember the first word. Um, so this one is doing well. There's five of them in here, but you can see that the growth habit or the um, growth rate is a little bit lower than the other super bells. Uh, it's just staying a little bit more compact, which sometimes you want a plant to do that if it's more of an accent, but I love the color. Well, it's a double, but I love that deep color in the center. It just makes it very unique and interesting. Next one is a coleus. There are three in this container. This is cherry drop. My word. I mean, it's just going for it. It's going to be interesting to see what happens. I mean, we still have a good, oh geez, three months at least of our season left. Um, yeah, three, three and a half months. And this one will probably start trailing way down but I really like the color. I like the amount of pink that's in there. And this one does get a little bit of protection in the afternoon from that tree, which I think is helpful, but it's super thick and robust looking. This one, Scavola Whirlwind White Improved. Now this one took forever to take off. We have this in the ground as well, and I'll show you that, but it was just kind of green. It looked healthy, but it was just green, green leaves. I could see buds. It took it a while to find its stride, but now it's kind of found it. Uh, you can see it has more of a, like you can, almost appreciate the blooms maybe a little bit more if you're looking down at it as opposed to straight on, but it's just loaded with blooms. I think there's only, no, there's five in this one. So I'm really happy with this. I've had pretty good luck with Scovola both in containers and in the ground. So it's one I'll probably repeat using. This one is the Superbina Cherry Burst. Is it just an improved or is it a brand new one? Cherry Burst Improved. This one looks like a candy cane, but it's interesting because every once in a while you'll get one like this, or we're experiencing that, but I kind of love it. I kind of like having that little bit of a difference, but it is performing really well. There are three in here. Next one is the Super Bells Blue Improved. Again, very robust, nice and thick, full of color the whole time. And I see no spent blooms on this one. I mean, it just kind of like right in here. It just buries its, it's uh, spent blooms right in there. And even that color, like it's not super light and I love that. I love that it doesn't fade. Okay, Super Tunia Mini Vista Sweet Sangria right here. Massive, there's three of them in here. And this one, I'm guessing by the end, I mean, we're gonna have some major trailing. Now I am seeing, this is what budworms do. See that? So it looks like we have been spraying weekly but it looks like we may need to take after this one again and make sure we get really good coverage on this. But anyway, this is very mild. If budworms take over, they will completely decimate your plants to where you have nice green foliage, but you have no blooms. Uh, they just eat away at the buds. So I'm glad I saw this <laughs> before it got worse. Okay, this one right here, this is a favorite. Super Bell's Double White. Look at that. Oh. That is just beautiful. There's only five of them in this container. For a double, I feel like they are just so productive and so vigorous. And it's just perfect. If you have a moon garden or you just want to pop, like a bright pop in a container, I mean, this is a great one. Okay, the Terenia, this is a pink improved. And this one took a while too to take off, but it's been doing really great. I mean, you can see all the blooms up here. It's just starting to trail over and it just kind of cycled out. It's never kind of been without color, but it was a little bit more full, maybe just about a week ago. And I think with this amount of heat that we had all of a sudden, things have, are kind of like, oh, 
oh, maybe powering down just a tiny bit some things. But I love the color on this one. I've, I also planted the large uh, wave violet, I think is what it's called, and I'm having great luck with that one as well. This is one we positioned on purpose to be sort of underneath this tree canopy because it does like a little bit more protection in the afternoon. In fact, you can put Terenia in the shade and it'll bloom beautifully and be a nice trailing plant. Uh, we have some by our chicken coop in pretty much full shade and it looks great. Okay, this one right here, this is the Supertunia Saffron Finch. Oh, it's so pretty. So, so pretty. Look at that color. It's almost so light on the outer part of this petal that it looks white, um, which gives it a glow with that darker center. Again, there's just three of them in this container and they're doing really well. This is not a Vista, this is just a straight up Supertunia. Typically with a Vista, you're dealing with a very aggressive plant that you have to make sure you give space to. I mean, they will like gobble other plants up. And I love that there's just straight up Supertunias that you can add into a container and you know that they're gonna play a little bit nicer with other plants. I love the color of this one so much. This one is the Supertunia Viva Hoopla Orchid. And I mean, no explanation needed on this one. My goodness, it's an eye-catching supertunia, that's for sure. With the, it's a real pretty pink, but that white stripe, that just makes every single individual bloom show up. And it makes the contrast with the deep green leaves really, I mean, it's a high contrast. So it's a very interesting and eye-catching plant. And I've really enjoyed it. And I actually put some of these out in the landscape uh, and we'll see, we'll see how they do. I planted it when it was kind of hot. So they're trying to establish right now. Now this one, this is a super being a pink cashmere and it's a very pretty color. I do feel like on this one, while again, you do not have to deadhead it in order for it to keep blooming, I just want to, because I feel like the spent blooms kind of, I don't know, maybe once this one puts on a little more growth, the new blooms will cover up the old blooms. We might be having some kind of a drip issue on <laughs> this one, because we've got two that are like, yes, we love our life, and then this one is just a little bit smaller. Looks healthy, but it's possible it's not getting quite as much water as the other two, so I'm gonna look into that. Uh, we've got the Supertunia Mini Vista Ultramarine, and I have to say on this one, just like with the Midnight, it is fading a bit, the older petals, but not as much as the Indigo, and I'm loving that. I'm loving that there's a very like Supertunia Royal Velvet look, but in a miniature, and one that maintains color a little bit more. And I'm just learning that that's uh, something that I like because when you pick out a color of Supertunia, you kind of want it to stay that way the whole time. Uh, but again, the growth rate is awesome on this one. I have these in the ground as well, so we'll go take a look, uh, but very impressed. This one, the Coconut Nemesia, you guys. So I put seven in here, and then I had to steal one for another project, so there's only six in here, which you really only need it. And Nemesia, before, before they had some better plants, like some better varieties out, they would fizzle out in summer heat, for me anyway, for us here in our area. And these, like this is the coconut improved, these hang out and stay all through the season. There's also like the Aramance uh, mulberry, which is awesome. But I love that you can get this plant for spring because it tolerates colder temperatures, have it spring all the way through fall. Like it's a true all season plant. You don't have to wait till it warms up for us in May sometime to plant it. And I do love the color. Again, this is kind of like the Bidens. I like it a little bit more when you can have something underneath it, but it's very fun to see how it's growing just on its own here. Okay, two left. We've got the sweet potato vinuses. Uh, I thought this was penny lace, but I don't know. It was labeled Red Hawk when it came in, but I didn't look like Red Hawk to me. So I'm undecided on what variety I actually got. It's very pretty and I'll do some digging and maybe we can put the name up on the screen um, because I wanna be precise. But the penny, penny lace looks like it's got maybe littler leaves in this one, like skinnier, but it's the same color. It's very nice, whatever it is. Again, we um, position this one under the shade of a maple tree just to give it a little protection. Typically, even though the sweet potato vine tags say that they want full sun, we can usually get away with putting them in shadier spots. Their growth rate isn't as, um, high, but they tolerate it and they're a really pretty foliar accent. And then the last one here is a Supertunia Bermuda, Bermuda Beach Improved. Again, you can see some budworm damage. Um, so we need to get after this one. And this one, uh, I also feel like, again, you don't have to deadhead it for it to keep blooming. It will keep blooming, but I feel like it looks better if you come in and deadhead it. Otherwise, it kind of looks like it's melting a little bit to me. I wonder uh, if that's also due to the, some budworms. Uh, it could be due to budworms. I'm noticing the same thing with the persimmon. 
as well. And I don't love that. I like it when, um, you know, the new growth truly buries the dead growth. That's what they call it. Um, when a plant flushes out and you get the nice blooms and then those fizzle away while the plant's pushing new growth to cover over them. And that's true of a lot of the ones that we've been looking at, but there's a few that just don't have that same kind of um, characteristic or I'm not experiencing that. The color is great and it's super eye-catching. And in fact, we just came off of like this whole thing was just like maybe two weeks ago, it was just loaded. Like you couldn't see any leaves. All of this had, and that's probably due to the budworm, all of this uh, had color. We've got these planted up in Versailles as well. And I feel like those are uh, more bloom to yeah, leaf ratio. Yeah, we'll go look at those because it's interesting sometimes when you try it. That's why I love to try out the new ones and pop some in the ground as well as having them in, in, in containers because it really gives you an idea of where they might be better suited in your area. And sometimes it's a matter of trying things out several times, like me and Superbells. <laughs> you know, I kind of sworn them off and I thought no more Superbells. I didn't do any last year at all. Uh, and this year I thought, oh, I'm going to order a few and just see what we can do here. And I'm having such good luck. Like I've got super bells in several containers and they're really doing well. So anyway, that is an update there on the hay rack. So now we're going to run around and I'll show you a few of these very same plants, but elsewhere. All right, guys. So starting right here, we have the saffron fringe super tunia. And again, I planted these when it was very hot. I thought I was actually going to lose this one and it has revived. It looks really good. And I think they're beautiful right here. We've got the Ringo double pink roses right here, which I think that soft pink with the soft yellow is beautiful. And of course, pairing the soft yellow with a purple like that, that's a hardy geranium that you can't beat that mix. It just looks so pretty. So we've got them right here and then they kind of cruise around and fill in this gap right here. I've got some Agastache here and some uh, pink illusion, I think, Veronica, which is just going out of bloom, but I just really think it's beautiful right here. So very happy with it. Right here we have the Viva Hoopla Orchid Supertunia. I think it looks beautiful here. I needed to pop a color. I mean, we've got color here. There's the Rudbeckia. These are the ones we rented over in the greenhouse. We've got Boom Chocolata Geraniums. And then behind me, it hasn't been developed very much. I thought, oh, it'd be so pretty and it would probably motivate me to continue on right here if I had something really eye-catching. And I think it really, really does it. It's really interesting. And this one, I don't notice the spent blooms at all, at all, which is great. Okay, right here we have the smitten pink super bells, which might become a fail in the end. They look amazing in the hay rack, and it says in the description that they do not recommend you plant super bells in the ground because they like so much drainage. And I thought, you know, what do I have to lose? <laughs> because I usually kill super bells anyway, no matter if they're in the ground or in a container. And I thought I lost them because I planted these the same day I planted all of this stuff right over here, all of these shrubs. And I had these super bells in the cart with me and I thought, well, they'd look really pretty right here. And then I proceeded to forget to water them. And it was like 96 or 97 that day. And I came out here that evening and they were all shriveled up already. I mean, they hadn't crisp crisped up yet but they were close so I got a hose out and watered them they revived we'll see what happens I mean I'm surprised they do have blooms on them at all so this will be a fun one to kind of report back to you guys as well see what <laughs> see what happens here so this right here we've got the super tunia Bermuda Beach improved and we've also got the super bells vintage coral and a stratosphere white gara as a centerpiece but oh my gosh the performance in these containers I am so happy with. Look at the Super Bells holding its own against a Super Tunia right here, looking amazing. The color is so eye catching right here. I'm really, really enjoying this one. Super Tunia Mini Vista Yellow right here on both sides, planted in mass. It looks so beautiful. I just was so impressed with its landscape performance last year. I was impressed both with it in the ground and in containers last year, but particularly in the ground. It just formed this thick mat. Um, and it was always full of color like this. And we've got some helichrysum. I think that blue foliage color with the yellow blooms is pretty. And then we've got some pink zinnias going in the back. So we'll have some really pretty layering going on here. And I just super impressed, highly recommend this one. Last one is the Scavola Whirlwind White. Again, this one took a minute to find its stride and it's just now coming into color. It's probably unfair of me to put it right next to the Supertunia Mini Vista White because that one definitely wins and you guys we have had a little bit of a struggle with water in this area we didn't realize to 
how much water this space holds onto. And we were watering it regularly, like we do <laughs> all of our other flower beds, not realizing that this was staying pretty soggy. So it's kind of, we're putting these plants through the paces and I'm really seeing which ones can handle it. Like this one can handle it. The Superbina, that's the uh, pink, sparkling pink amethyst maybe. I, I, anyway, that one's handling it. The Bordeaux is not loving it. The salvia is loving it. The sunflowers are not loving it. <laughs> so it's really interesting to see how plants do in situations like that. Uh, this one, I think we're gonna see a lot of color from it here in a little bit, because even if you look at the center of the plant, you can see all the branches that are about ready to start forming up some color. So it might just be another week or two and this will be a solid mat of white, which is what I have experienced before when I planted this one in the ground. So anyway, Kind of fun just to try these things out show you guys the progress how things are going i'm hoping that we rectified the water situation in time for some of this bordeaux to <laughs> improve uh anyway yeah so that is the update on all the new varieties that we have going in the hay racks in particular these that we have out in the landscape are just kind of for fun we'll see what happens and we will update you on those as well as the season progresses and we have a week a week's worth actually 10 days well, today's supposed to be 99 tomorrow's like 98 and then we have a week's worth of 108, 110, 107 degree temperatures. So it will be interesting to see what happens with all these plants with that kind of heat. Uh, but we'll probably give you another update, I'm guessing, in about another couple weeks or maybe a month. We'll see how it goes. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it, and then we will see you in the next one. Bye. All right, guys, P.S. I completely forgot about this spot right here. We've got some great ones. The sun's starting to come out, but we've got the Campfire Marshmallow Bidens. So see how much better it looks in the landscape or just at least with things planted kind of underneath it. It just is such a pretty drift in here. I'm loving it. You know, we've got the uh, Lime Time Coleus as kind of a backdrop. There's the James Britannia. Equally as good a performance here in the landscape as we have in the Hayrax. Super happy with that one. And this one, you guys, um, can handle drier conditions and it likes a lot of heat. It's native to South Africa. So if you're kind of want to, wanting to get away from things that you know need a lot of moisture, this still I think would benefit, this one gets consistent moisture, but it doesn't need as much as some other things. Uh-oh, got a kitty fight going on around us. Douglas. And then the Supertunia Mini Vista Ultramarine. So again, this one is maintaining its color a bit better than the indigo. You can see a little bit of fading here, but I'm happy with the amount of blooms it's throwing out. It's really incorporating nicely right here. Like it hasn't gobbled up the rest of the plants yet. So I'm happy about that. But I think this is a really pretty blend. Really happy with it. And I think that that is it. See you guys later.